You know, I can remember so clearly that night when um, I was watching the news and the newscaster said, and now this amazing new image from the Hubble Space Telescope, and it really was the most amazing astronomical image I'd ever seen. Well, I'm here with Sir Patrick Moore's telescope here in his home in Selsey. And tonight I was hoping to actually get the dome open to have a look at the night sky, but the best laid plans, etc. It started to rain, of course. Um, but that doesn't mean it's going to stop me telling you about a fantastic Messier object, which is one of my favourites, which is M16, the Eagle Nebula. I find we often end up talking about things called nebula, but it yeah. seems like nebula doesn't always mean the same thing. No. What is a nebula? Well, it's kind of a fuzzy thing. It's a thing that isn't, doesn't look like a star, you know. So I think when Messier was doing his catalogue, he was looking for things which were kind of different, you know, different from planets, different from stars. I guess we describe them as kind of ionised gas. Some are young things, some are old things, some of stars have blown up. So they're very different types of objects, but what's in common with them is they're kind of extended, big, fuzzy things. On my laptop here, I've got some pictures of the Eagle Nebula, and the first one I've got up actually doesn't look that impressive. You can see a cluster of stars in the centre here, and if you look very carefully, there is a slight mistiness around the outside. And what I've tried to do with this image is actually give an impression of what the Eagle Nebula looks like through a telescope. In fact, I've over-egged it here, because you can't really see that nebulosity very well. When you first look at the object, when you get it in your finder, and then you switch to the eyepiece on your telescope, you look at it, all you can see is this cluster of stars. The cluster's quite obvious through the eyepiece, but the nebulosity just isn't there. Now that's a great pity, because the Eagle Nebula builds up a huge amount of expectation, because this is the nebula which Hubble imaged, which shows the pillars of creation. Mostly I study galaxies, and usually pictures of galaxies are far prettier than anything else. So, but this is one of those rare cases where I'm actually jealous of the people who study stars because this is probably one of the most beautiful pictures I've ever seen in astronomy. I just remind anyone who can't remember, this is it here. These towers of gas and dust within the Eagle Nebula. It's described as pillars of creation because within these pillars, these are kind of factories for newborn stars. They look like they're illuminated from the top because actually they are illuminated from the top. Sort of off, off camera, off to the side, there are some very bright young stars and the ultraviolet radiation, the light from these bright stars is burning away the material. So there's a cluster of stars which is basically producing lots of optical and ultraviolet radiation and these pillars are being illuminated by the radiation from these stars in this cluster. So the photons are eating their way down into the, the gaps in between these pillars, but the pillars are sort of standing there as the last vestiges that haven't yet been photoionized away by this intense ultraviolet radiation from the stars that are out of the shot. This is another very famous image of these pillars showing these kind of dense regions of gas and dust. Dust is the stuff that makes it kind of opaque. As the pillars are slowly getting eaten away as well, there are little knots that are just starting to appear from the pillars, and at least in some of those knots, stars are in the process of forming. They call them eggs, I think, which is evaporating gaseous globules. The green lines show the outline of the two famous pillars. So the one on the right here is this one here, and this tiny bit here are the famous pillars of creation image. A question that people often ask about, the, about pictures in astronomy in general, but particularly the beautiful pictures that come out of the Space Telescope, is, is that really the way it looks, you know, or has an artist cheated? And the answer is kind of yes and no, in the sense that what's being shown there is really going on, but of course the person making the picture had some choices to make. For example, you could put those pillars any way up. Things in space have no particular orientation to them. The reason why they look the dramatic way they are is because they're vertical, they're these incredible fantasy cliffs. The picture's made up of a composite of various different images taken in different bands, actually telling you about different atomic species. Exactly how you choose to colour those things is a matter of choice, but all those choices in some sense are true. They haven't made anything up. All of the stuff in there is real scientific data. So why can't you see that nebula when you look through the eyepiece? Well, it is there, but it's just quite faint. Now, if you do a longer exposure picture, of the eagle, this starts to bring out some of the nebulosity quite well. So you've got the cluster of stars here again, and you've got the nebulosity glowing here. This is an emission nebula. That's where hydrogen gas is being excited and it's giving off light, primarily in a wavelength known as hydrogen alpha. The eagle nebula part of the nebula is actually very small. It's just this dark part you see here on the screen. I've zoomed right in. 
This is its wing, this is its body. So this would be its uh, sort of beak up here and eye. And then this is one of its claws. To me, it always looks like it's just swooped down and caught a fish. There's also an alternative name for it, which you probably have never heard, but it's an American name called the Star Queen Nebula. And the way I've seen it, I think, is she's sitting on a kind of sledge type thing, and she's sort of moving in this direction, and that's her head sort of facing up here. That's her bosom, so to speak, and this is her hair sort of streaming back in the wind. Those pillars have a cloud-like appearance. They look quite gentle, they look quite nice. If we were able to do some hardcore space tourism and go there, would it be a nice place? You made it sound quite hostile when you were talking it, about ionisation. It's certainly true that the reason why they end up looking the way they do is because quite aggressive things have been going on that's been eating away the material in between. So there's lots of ultraviolet radiation. Probably wouldn't be a very healthy place to be without a, you know, a healthy dose of sunscreen before you went out there. And then, when it's completed, I'm going to set fire. Look at the top in the infrared, then all of that dust glows. And so the galaxy looks completely different in the infrared. You can see this distinct And now I have a reservoir of gas inside my...